This video supported in part by... Playing VR, I tend to sweat. It gives me an edge. The King of Nerds happens to give me an edge, too. Let King of Nerds give you the edge. Bye, King of Nerds. I have always been fascinated by the ColecoVision, the second-generation console released in 1982 by the formerly known as the Connecticut Leather Company, changed their name to Coleco and jumped on the electronics and video game bandwagon when everybody else was. And my fascination with the ColecoVision isn't because I had it and loved it as a kid, but because I missed it as a kid and wanted one so badly. I had the Atari and the ColecoVision when it came out was substantially more expensive. And I had several kids I knew in the neighborhood who had a ColecoVision and I could go play at their house. And man, the Donkey Kong on ColecoVision was bananas good. And in fact, it was a pack-in game. It was so good. It was the thing that sold the system, honestly. And then I would go home and play my Atari <laughs> Donkey Kong and wish I had a ColecoVision, but just never got one. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John, I am a Gen X Grown Up, and in this video, I wanna share with you my first step down the path of becoming a ColecoVision collector, and it started not with an actual ColecoVision, but with this ColecoVision flashback that was put out by At Games back in 2016. So I picked up one of these, I want a real ColecoVision. I actually grabbed one not too long ago. I've got it in a drawer, it needs some restoration. But this is my first step. Like, I, I want to get into the realm of ColecoVision. I want to learn and get to know the ports of arcade games that came out on this and the original games that came out on this. So I'm about to open this up and explore what it has in it for the first time. It's got like 60 games or something on it. It's bananas, it's got so much. So let's head over to the table, open it up and try it out. All right, let's get into this thing. Now, I picked this up at a secondhand video game store some years ago. It was labeled as new, which there's some evidence that it's new and some evidence that it might have been lightly used. Either way, it, is here, it appears to be fully complete, uh, and that much, you know, I'm uh, pleased about. It's the ColecoVision flashback, 60 built-in games. In fact, if you flip it over, uh, look at this. Look at this just lineup of games, and some of them I definitely mean like, like, like what, Zaxxon, Oil's Well, Minor 2049er, Choplifter. I mean, I see Space Panic, Space Fury over here. I just so many things that I know really well from other platforms, and then some that um, like Rolo Venture and uh, I don't know, Squishem Sam. There's some here that I'm captivated to find out what kind of stuff is on here in addition to the titles that I know and games that I've never played because I never never had a ColecoVision at all. So yeah, let's get into this guy. Uh, see, uh, okay. Uh, so here's uh, here's the little, uh, here's the receipt from when I, uh, I picked it up. Uh, and it has instructions. Interestingly, the instructions are really uh, like individual instructions for the different games since you don't have a manual for the games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of throw it away a little in case I need it later. The thing I was unsure of whether or not would be in here was happy to see, you know, one of the things they say they included are some of these controller overlays and they are in fact here, which is good news. Uh, we have a couple of controllers which are designed like the ColecoVision controllers. Let's move this out of the way. One controller, here's uh, our second controller. Look at those in a second, and then we have the console. So all the contents here for the uh, charger aside, the controllers very much reminiscent that I remember of the ColecoVision controllers. Again, didn't have one, but <laughs> the, uh, the, I have held them and played with them a bit. If you look at the console, here's what makes me question whether or not it is entirely new and unused. There's a little bit of scuff marking on the top of these reset and power buttons as if they have been not fiercely but lovingly used so i question whether it's purely new but a new condition it's in great shape i think looking at the controller i mean so you have the two little side buttons here you have the keypad and these these actually feel better than i remember on the real controller it's kind of a rubbery a bit of a rubbery button i kind of like that and uh, this is not turn like a paddle or spinner it's just a, like you can use with your thumb to turn it or yeah, use it uh, and you know, it's universally left or right-handed, which I think was uh, probably a good selling point for lefties you know, back in the day. These little overlays, though, the thing that I was most concerned would not be in the package and that totally were, uh, several sets of different overlays that you can put inside of your controller. And let's just take one. Uh, what do we got? It was an interesting looking one here. It looks like it's uh, 
We're saying about an airplane control. But in fact, now I see it's for a game called The Dam Blasters. Hey, watch your language. <laughs> so you can uh, take this little guy and you just tuck it right in here and it slides right along. And then, and it cl clicks in pretty well. And then the number pad actually has, you know, labeled buttons. So you know what to do and then you pull it out. Reminds me, Intellivision had this for a lot of games, I think. Uh, they're notoriously missing, but in this case, we got a whole bunch of them for quite a few different games where it seems to matter. And in our current climate, I think I would be remiss if I didn't point out that this little box with a power and reset button and two plugs in the front is suspiciously reminiscent of the forthcoming Game Station Plus from My Arcade. Little box, power and reset buttons, two little ports on the front. Hmm. Oh, and plus the little rainbow in ColecoVision. I don't think it was intentional necessarily, but when you're looking at little small consumer electronics like this, it's hard to miss that this is almost exactly the same design that my arcade is using for that forthcoming Atari console. All right, well, what do you say we break out the old multi-input TV that can handle this kind of uh, RCA input and give this thing a spin? Little splash screen. All right, flashback, there it is. All right, so we got the one uh, game pad plugged in here and so I'm navigate, yeah, navigate with the pad. So 60 games, that would be 10 pages of, yeah, six pages of 10, yeah. Uh, well, let's stop. something I know. Bump and Jump is a good one. Choplifter, oh, it's a great old computer game. Let's see how it looks. I remember these ColecoVision launch screens. They sit forever, it feels, and it's a cartridge. I mean, it's not, it's not loading. There it is. Oh, and I remember these blue screens. Yeah, so you use the numpad to pick what you want to do. So uh, one skill, one player, sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Where's some tanks? Let's save a couple of guys real quick. Don't squish them, don't squish them. Oh, I just squished one. Rescue! <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, Cosmic Avenger, that's uh, universal, maybe? I think that's uh, like a scrambly kind of thing. Let's see. It is universal. Yeah, it's this Cosmic Avenger. <laughs> yeah, so I have the uh, bullets and missiles. Great. Another great port. Man, ColecoVision just, it was so far ahead of the Atari. What else do I know on here? Oh, Dragonfire, is that the Magic game? Yes, a magic, wow. Holy Moses, this looks so much better. I'm used to it on the Atari. Ah! <laughs> the joypad is a, takes a little, we get used to, I'm just dying nonstop. This is just a beautiful version of Dragonfire that I keep falling in the moat with, but doesn't take away from the fact that it's gorgeous. I'm gonna kind of blame this joystick. It doesn't lend itself very well. I remember there was a ColecoVision stick that you, it had a stick and there was a ball top too. Wish I had that. Uh, oh, that Frenzy. Oh my goodness. That's the, the Berserk sequel? Yes. Stern. Oh, wow. That's, that's a really good Frenzy. I'm digging these ports here. Oh, that is destroyable walls. I forgot about that. Uh, oh my goodness. Gateway to Apshai? That's, I mean, that's straight up computer game stuff right there. That's, uh, there's my, oh. My equipment, dagger, leather armor, stuff like, wow, that's that's really great. Let's uh, give a little run around. Let's go fight mode. There we go, so I can fight. Oh, there's there's a rat. Kill the rat. Got him. I'm gonna get a sword. Short sword, nice. Ghostbuster. Oh, Jumpman, that's another Epics title. Push pound, there it is. Oh, this looks great. Such a great platforming puzzle game. And if you haven't played Jumpman Jr., you oughta. The Jungle Hunt is right below it, the arcade port. All right. Surprise me, ColecoVision. I've never seen the Jungle Hunt port here. Oh, wow. Now, granted, the Atari was pretty good, but this is nearly arcade. Let's get to the water, at least, just to see the water. Into the water. Yep. 
Oh, got a crocodile. There's so many. Miner 2049er, take a quick look at that. Played the crap out of this Big Five software. Oh man, it's top speed. I could stand for the joystick to be a little taller. It's, it's kind of weird to hold it like this, honestly. That's minor, albeit at top speed. Uh, I mean, I, I, several of them I'm familiar with. I just can't play all 60 here, obviously. I'll bore you, but playing ColecoVision, it just feels like something is missing. Like, you, you know what it is. I mean, you know what's missing. You know what I mean there? Like, there's so many cool things on here, but it's a ColecoVision. And right here, between Destructor and Dragonfire, it's the omission of Donkey Kong. I say omission. I'm sure it's just Nintendo would not let them put Donkey Kong on this flashback because Nintendo doesn't put, let anybody put any of their games on anything. As we all know, we all would love to have, you know, a tabletop and handheld Donkey Kong, all that. Not going to happen. But the problem is the ColecoVision, especially for me, and I think for a lot of people, it's synonymous with Donkey Kong. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that was the pack-in game. In a way, I think that Donkey Kong port is what defined ColecoVision and gave it its foothold in the market. So as many cool titles as there are on this little flashback, not having Donkey Kong is just like, oh, it's so close, but not the thing I was looking for. As good as it is, you're just missing that that it's like having a Atari 2600 and no combat. It's like unthinkable. Oh my, oh, Zaxxon is down there. Oh. Let's see what the Zaxxon port on here looks like. Ugh. Sound is weird, but boy, does it look good. <laughs> look at that. Ooh, there's a rocket coming up at me. Let's go over this wall. What a good Zaxxon, man, it's... This thing should have made so much more money. Had it been on the market for longer, there's no reason. This should not have been the dominant platform. Yeah, I'm back around. Let's look at something that uses a uh, little overlay. Let's try this blackjack game. So I plugged in the little overlay. Let's give it a shot. So I spit. Oh, got 18. Uh, no, I'm gonna stand. Did that work? It did. 17, 18, I won. Let's see, uh, what about uh, Princess Quest? Some kind of adventure game? Look at that, press fire. Oh, but it's a little platformer. Okay, that's kind of cute. It's almost like a ghost and goblins, wouldn't you say? And it has that same kind of, he's got a little knight there. Let's look at just a couple more than maybe, like Oil's Well. Oh, Mega Race, we gotta look at that right quick. There's Oil's Well. This is a great one I played on my Atari computer again. Oh, this is so cool. It's like a little tethered Pac-Man game. You know, and I'm getting used to the controls in reality. Whoa, get him. Finish, finish, finish. Got it. That's cool. I've got to look at Omega Race because, I mean, it's Omega Race, right? The space physics. A color Omega Race. Wow. I'm not sure what to think about that. Oh, the thrust is on the other key. Get him. Yeah, this is a pretty cool system. It, <laughs> Despite what's missing, maybe because of what's missing, it makes me want more ColecoVision stuff, really. Yeah, that's pretty much sealed the deal for me. This has whet my appetite for collecting genuine ColecoVision cartridges and, and titles and, and whatever there is out there. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I actually did acquire a genuine ColecoVision, but I've yet to clean it up. I've never done a video on it. so. You know, it's the hunt of new things. Having the tangible cartridges in your hand is so cool. And plus with that one, I can play Donkey Kong because I'm not limited by what could be licensed on this modern unit. I'll look for the response to this video in the comments below to tell me whether or not you'd like to see more ColecoVision coverage. And if so, I'll schedule that for a future video. In the meantime, I'll put a link here and here to some more console coverage from the 80s that we have done here on Gen X Grown Up. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy though in this video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>